Okay, welcome to the second part of, uh, of Astro 160. Uh, this is going to be about black holes and relativity. And uh, just to give you a kind of a preview, the whole point of black holes is that, of course, they emit no light, so you can't see them directly. Uh, and so the question arises, how do you know that they're there? And the re reason you can demonstrate that black holes exist is because they're in uh, orbit around other things, and you can see the motion of the other things uh, that interact gravitationally with the black hole. This concept should be familiar to a certain extent, because it's exactly the same thing we've been doing for discovering exoplanets. You don't see the exoplanet directly. Uh, what happens is that there's something else that you can see that's affected by the presence of the exoplanet. So the exactly the same thing happens with, with black holes. And so we're going to use uh, the same equations, the same concepts, uh, to explore this very different context. So uh, black holes, uh, hole of black holes. Uh, can't be seen directly. And so instead of uh, detecting them directly, you use uh, uh, this combination of orbital dynamics <coughs> and uh, things like the Doppler shift to infer their presence and more than just inferring their presence, to infer uh, their properties. Now. The context is more complicated. Uh, and in particular, uh, we're no longer going to be using uh, Newton's laws, Newton's law of gravity, Newton's laws of motion, uh, because there's a more comprehensive theory that replaced Newton, uh, which is necessary to understand these things. And that more uh, complex theory is uh, Einstein's theory of relativity. So we're going to be using some relativity rather than Newtonian physics. This gets weird very fast, OK? Uh, and uh, so I'm not going to start there. I'm going to start with a kind of Newtonian explanation for what black holes are. We'll do that this time. And then uh, the weirdness will start on Thursday. Uh, so the first concept uh, and the easiest way, I think, to understand black holes uh, is the concept of the escape velocity. This is a piece of high school physics. Some of you may have encountered it before. Uh, and it just means how fast you have to go to escape from the gravitational field of a given object. If you go outside and you uh, shoot up a rocket ship or something like that, how fast do you have to shoot it up so that it doesn't fall back to the Earth? And so that you can define an escape velocity for the Earth. Uh, or for any other object, for that matter, which is just how fast you have to go to escape its gravitational field. Uh, there's an equation associated with this. It looks like this. Uh, v escape, the, that's the escape velocity, 2 g m over r, uh, all to the 1 half power. Uh, and uh, this is the speed uh, required to escape. Uh, uh, the gravitational field of an object, uh, supposing that the object has mass equal to m and radius equal to r. Oh, one other assumption. Uh, I'm assuming here that you're standing on the that you start from standing on the surface of the object. Uh, if you are on the surface. OK. This equation should look vaguely but not 100% familiar to you, because you derived something that looked a lot like it on the second problem set, where you worked out the relationship between the semi-major axis of an orbit <coughs> and, and the speed an object had to go in to be in that orbit. and what. Uh, the way that calculation worked out, it was velocity equals gm over the semi-major axis, A. So that 2 wasn't there uh, in that derivation. But otherwise, the form of this is actually quite similar to that. And so let me explain uh, why that is. 
here's, uh, here's some object. It's got a radius of r and a mass of m. Uh, and imagine that you've got something that's in orbit around this object, but it's in orbit right above the surface. It's just skimming the surface of the thing. Uh, that would be impossible in the case of Earth because the friction from the atmosphere would slow you down, but in a, uh, a planet without an atmosphere, this would be possible. Uh, imagine you're just sort of skimming over the tops of the mountains or whatever. So here you are in orbit. This is something in a nice circular orbit right above the surface of this object, and it's going around. And uh, it's got some velocity, which I'm going to call the circular velocity. And uh, as we calculate it uh, in the previous section of the course, that's gm over a, which is in this case gm over r, because you're s uh, skimming the surface to the 1 half power. So that's how fast you have to go to stay in orbit. If you go slower than that, uh, let's take a different color here. If you go slower than that, you crash into the surface right away because you don't, you're not going fast enough to stay in orbit. So that's what happens in the case if you have a velocity less than the circular velocity. What happens if you're going faster than the circular velocity? Well, you're going so fast that you move further away from this object. You don't stay skimming the surface. So here you are going a little bit faster, and now you're not in a circular orbit. And your orbit ends up looking something like this. Nice elliptical orbit. And this is uh, a velocity greater than the circular velocity, uh, but still less than the escape velocity. Because you haven't escaped the gravitational uh, uh, field, because uh, you're still in an orbit. It's an elliptical orbit now, but you're still in an orbit, and it'll come back to the same place. Now, if you're going at somewhat faster than that at the escape velocity, then you never come back. You continue uh, all the way out to infinity. Uh, your orbit continues to change direction a little bit due to the gravitational force of this thing. You continue to slow down. Uh, but in the end, uh, you never come back. So it's a non-repeating orbit. And if you're going even faster than the escape velocity, uh, then uh, you uh, get to infinity even faster. Uh, and, uh, uh, and more importantly, when you get there, you're still moving pretty fast. Uh, this you uh, gradually slow down. So all of these different kinds of orbits, the one that crashes into the planet, the one that skims the planet, the one that's an elliptical orbit, the one that escapes altogether, those are all within a factor of the square root of two of each other. Uh, because remember, the escape velocity here is equal to 2 gm over r to the 1 half. So uh, just by increasing your, or your orbital speed by a factor of the square root of 2, you go from being in a nice circular orbit to escaping the gravitational field of the object altogether. So you can calculate escape velocities of things. Uh, let's do that once. The escape velocity of Earth, of Earth, that would be the escape is 2 gm over r to the 1 half. Uh, 2 g is 7 times 10 to the minus 11. Uh, m is for the Earth is 6 times 10 to the 24. Uh, r for the Earth is something like 7 times 10 to the 6. This all has to be taken to the 1 half power. The 7's cancel. What do we have here? Let's see. 12 times. Uh, 10 to the 13, 24 minus 11, over 10 to the 6, 1 half. Let's see, that's 1.2. 14 minus 6 is 8, uh, times 10 to the 8 to the 1 half. That's something like 10 to the 4 meters per second, because I've used uh, the value of g that's appropriate for meters per second. So that's about uh, 10 kilometers. Uh, a second. So that's the escape velocity of the Earth. If you go outside, you throw a football up into the air at 10 kilometers per second, it's not going to come back down. 